October is in the bag, so let's see all the games that I completed in October. So the very first game that I completed in October was called The Park. It is a game about a woman who has lost her son in an amusement park. And you see all this creepy crap that happens. Pretty much, you have to follow a path. And it goes from amusement park ride to amusement park ride. And you are seeing things and you don't know what is real and what is fake. And so the whole time, you're not sure if she's imagining everything, if she has hurt her son, if her son was kidnapped. You don't know the story other than you're looking for her son. And so I enjoyed this from beginning to end. I had a great time with it. I do recommend to play this. It was on sale. I don't know if it's still on sale. But if you find it, grab it. And there is many things that scared me. Like I had a good time with this one. The next game I completed was another game that was on sale. It's a Telltale game. It's The Wolf Among Us. This is an imagination, a reimagination of what the fairy tale creatures would have been like in the real world. So you have the wolf, you have grandma, you have Red Riding Hood, you have everybody like Little Mermaid. All the fairy tales that you could think of have been put into a little melting pot and they have their own little community. And they're living kind of like in a city like New York. And basically the whole time that they're in this city, they have their own government, they have their own system. If somebody breaks a rule, they have a court system, which is basically just everybody who's still alive, who votes on everything, and then you find out what happens with them. But I enjoyed this one. I do recommend it. It's uh, a lot of games like Telltale where you finish the story and I want to finish the second one. I want to get to the second one. I want to go through. So if you find it, it does have nudity, just FYI. That's why I didn't stream it. I wanted to stream it, but then I saw that there was nudity and I was like, damn. Ah! So I wanted to go through it, but yeah, I knew this would get flagged. So great game. Try it out. The next game is called A Day Without Me. This is a little indie game where it's a top-down view and you wake up and you think it's a normal day, but then you start realizing that there's nobody else around. You don't see anybody in your house. You don't see anybody in your place. You start going investigating the neighborhood. Nobody is around the neighborhood. So you start going exploring and then you see cars that are crashed, things that are strange. And this was a game that was intriguing to me because it's kind of like a Metroidvania or kind of like a game where they just throw you into the mix and it's old like NES style. You don't know what's going on. So you have to just wander around until eventually you find something. And I kind of like games like that when it's small and you know it's going to be a short game. This game took me about an hour. And literally you go and you look for a house, you find this, you find that. And then you'll see something change when you interact with it. Like flowers will bloom, but then there are flowers that are not good for you to step on. So then you're like, what am I going to do now? So highly recommend this one. This one was dirt cheap. I don't know if it's still dirt cheap, but I had a good time with this one. Now, here's a thing that nobody really knew. I didn't play the original Layers of Fear when it released. I didn't. I was just not intrigued by it at the time. I was more intrigued by other games and kept putting it on the back burner every year. I would be like, oh, I'll play next year, I'll play next year. So this time, this year, for Halloween, October month, Face Your Fears, I was like, you know what? I'll finally play it because I keep wanting to get ready and hyped for Silent Hill 2 Remake. And these are the people that created Layers of Fear, and they're going to be remaking that game, Silent Hill 2 Remake. I wanted to be intrigued, and I wanted to see what they had to offer and what was hype, because I played Medium, and I didn't like it. I hated it. I didn't even finish it. I stopped midway because I got bored. So this game, it's about a painter who is losing his mind. You don't know what is real. Again, I keep playing games that are always the same and the same style. He doesn't know what's going on. He's trying to figure out the world. And you find out through each scenario that something happened. You don't know what. You don't know if he did something to his wife, if his wife did something to him, if he is dead, if he's alive. So it's kind of like got that theme of like PT, 
meets, you know, a walking simulator. So I enjoyed it. I will say there was some stuff that I was like, huh? <laughs> but that's kind of games like that where you're just like, eh, just let it happen. I laughed. I did have one or two jump scares. They did get me. So kudos to you. But I'm waiting for Silent Hill 2. If they mess it up, gonna be pissed. The next game is called A House in a Cornfield. This is a really fun little indie game that it was on Steam. And basically I started playing it and didn't know what I was going to get into. It's a maze game where you have to find pumpkins and you have to stop evil. So you collect all the pumpkins, but there is an evil scarecrow who keeps popping up randomly. And if he corners you and you don't get out of his range within like five seconds, you are dead. I had a fun time with this. This took me like three times to beat because the first time was just figuring out what was going on. The second time was, okay, now that I know what I'm doing, I got to get going, but I got cornered. So I was like, damn it. <laughs> and then the third time was, okay, well, where are all the pumpkins? And then I was like, hmm, I think I know where every, th every pumpkin is. And so I just kept looking and I found them all and I got really good at avoiding him. So I recommend this one because of the fact that it's got a 8-bit, 16-bit feel to it. The graphics are not amazing, but the gameplay is so much fun. You can replay this game over and over again because the placement of the pumpkins is different each time. And he is so random and he'll teleport from one area to another and you don't know. So it adds a layer of fear to it that you don't know. You're not expecting him to pop up and shank you. You're just like, okay, yeah, there he is. I'm dead. So I do recommend this one. Grab it. It's free. You'll have a good time with it. So the next game is A Man Outside, and this one is another indie game that was on Steam, and this one is pretty much you're a kid, and you're home alone, and you are trying to do your homework. So you are working through the puzzles, and you're thinking, oh, this is not going to be fun, but then you keep hearing something happening outside. You keep hearing, like, breaking of glass and different things, and you keep looking, and he's moving around. He'll be in a different spot. So it's like, also, I got to watch him to make sure he doesn't try to break in. And you have choices to make. And every time you make a choice, it could lead to something bad that happens. So careful with your choices. But I had a good time with this one. I do know that it was a small indie team, maybe one person or two people. So you'll have fun with this one. After that, I played a game on stream. And this is The Devil and Me. And I wanted to see what happened to all the characters. This is another game from the creators of Man of Medan, Little Hope, and this is like, I guess the end of the season one, where it was just like, something's wrong with everybody, you gotta worry about what's happening in their head, and I like this one a lot more than I like the other ones. So basically, it's kind of like Saw or Manhunt, where these people go into a house, and they know it's a house that had a killer at one time and they're trying to get through and slowly but surely they find out the house is a trap and they can try to get away but he's gonna close a, a wall and then eventually you're gonna get stuck somewhere and you're gonna get separated that's his goal is to get everybody separated so you have to save as many people as you can I only lost one person throughout the whole time I'm not sure if you can save everybody because there's a couple traps in there where I felt like, I don't know if, if I did something, both of them would die kind of thing. So I'm not sure if you can save everybody, but I saved almost everybody except for one person. So try it out. It's a fun game. Um, it's not for everybody. If you're squeamish, you might not like it because it's got the horror like Saw movies, but it's a game that I recommend. After that, I played a game called Something in the Woods. This is another Steam game. It's, uh, again, one person made this game. You are a cop who drives up to a gas station only to find blood on the floor and you have to start investigating what happened. You start hearing sounds from outside of the gas station and you're like, oh great, now I have to investigate what's going on. And it turns from a walking simulator to a Doom game and you get a gun and you're like, oh shit, I can hear something screaming in the woods. This is not good. What's going to happen? 
It's an extremely short game, but it's so fun. I recommend it. I died a couple times because I couldn't figure out how to get around some stuff, but I don't want to spoil it. Definitely, definitely play this game. If you like Doom games, if you like like Wolfenstein, old 16-bit Wolfenstein games, you're going to enjoy this game. It's a one-and-done kind of game, but I recommend everybody who's into style shooter games from back in the day, you will have so much fun that you'll want to play it again. Like, I played it twice, even though it was only like a 20-minute game. I had so much fun, I just could not stop playing it. That, And then I was like, well, I played it twice, I had a good time. This is a one-person team game. That person did such an amazing job that I now want to play other games from this developer. Like, I want to see what else he has made. So, definitely recommend. This is one of my favorite games of October. I had a great time with it. I had played Last of Us uh, maybe a couple years ago on stream, and I wanted to play Last of Us Left Behind, and I had not played the DLC in forever as well, so I was like, I'm gonna throw it in and play it. It's a very short game, it's like two hours long. The only thing that's frustrating is you play as Ellie the whole time, so she is not strong. Joel is a beast, he will just bulldoze everybody, take everybody out, punch his way through. But Ellie, you have to stealth all the way through, and I don't like stealth games. But I like the story of the DLC so much that I will deal with the stealth of every part of this game just to watch the story again. So you are Ellie, you're trying to save Joel. As you're going through, you are looking for medical supplies in a mall, and you have to deal with the people that are trying to kill you and Joel. And they know that you are hurt, or both of you are hurt. So you have to go and avoid them as much as possible. And you have to deal with clickers and other people that are running around. And in the end, you keep remembering all the old stuff from back in the day of how you got where you were. It does give you a backstory of the person that she talks about in the game. What happened to that person. And if you're not familiar with it, it's free on Game Pass. So get Game Pass for like two, three months. Play it. You will build you up and you'll understand if you haven't seen the TV show then you'll go and play it again but I liked it I've always liked this I like this last of us I cannot wait to see what they do with the season two even though a lot of people hate it I'm okay with it I just don't want them to screw it up and make it too dramatic but we'll see what happens and the very last game that I played was called linger in the shadows this was an intriguing game. It's an in a game that it's an indie team as well, but it's more of about art and the flow of the demonic entity and different things that you see. So pretty much what you do is you interact. So for example, you'll get your controller and you have to shake it. And then the next one is going to say, rotate the analog sticks. And then the next one is going to say, turn your controller all the way around and then you have to keep turning your controller left and right like if you were in a steering wheel and then you have to find exactly rewind the video for a second keep going forward it's a game where it's interacting so much that it doesn't really feel like a game at a certain point you're like oh is this just me kind of like a walking simulator. A lot of people don't count walking simulators as games, even though they are in their own art form a game. This is kind of like that too, where it feels like a horror thing or a thriller because you have something that's like following you around and then it's a creature and then it's in the shadows and then it just pops up randomly and then you have to start like interacting with things to get the story to move forward. I had a good time with it. It's another extremely short game. I wouldn't pay for this ever. I wouldn't. It, it's a game that it, if it wasn't free on Game Pass, I don't think I would ever have played it, to be honest. I saw it and thought, oh, this is going to be a cool horror or a thriller. Because when you search for it on the category, it pops up like that. But it's more of an art game. It's not really scary. Um, I guess if you're afraid of something that could pop up randomly, maybe. But I didn't get scared at all. I do support indie teams, so I did to download it and play it just to try it out, but it's on the PlayStation 3, so it's a very old game. Um, 
there is no ending really. I mean, you just kind of like linger on, so it's unsatisfying in a way, but I guess that's an indie team, so yeah, try it out. And there you have it, everybody. That is 10 games in the bag I have completed. I will enjoy <laughs> November because I already started off with a few good games that I wanted to play. But let me know, how was your October? Did you have any games that were out of the box that were like my games indie team made a game that you're like, wow, definitely try this out. It'll help out the community. Other people will get to see it and it'll help out the indie team because if it's even if it's five dollars, that's five dollars in their pocket. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember, give it a like. It helps out the algorithm. If you're new, please sub and check out a couple other videos and I will catch you either in a stream or another video. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal.